Last week while testing live streaming for the first time, I completed the 15 ball L drill on the first attempt. Feeling good about myself, I decided to try to complete the drill in reverse order, and it didn't go quite as well. Finally, I got the job done, and when I posted the video of the successful run to YouTube, I asked viewers to guess how long I struggled before I finally completed the drill. Here's a chart showing the distribution of the guesses, and I'm really flattered by the fact that most people guessed between 4 and 22 minutes. I really appreciate that and how I wish it were so. But I did struggle quite a bit that night. I think the first lesson I learned from that was tenacity. I was not going to go to bed that night until I finished that drill. And that resolution made me push through, keep thinking, keep fighting, keep analyzing. And I figured out a couple of things, I think, that helped me. And two days later, I ran 96 balls of straight pool. And I've got that video on YouTube. Anyway, here's the start of the successful run with the timer on screen. And the starting point of the first shot was one hour and 36 minutes. Yes, it took me 96 minutes to get my head together and complete this drill. No one guessed 96 minutes. The winner, without going over, was a guess of 75 minutes by Mike Musengo III. So Mike, send me a private message and I'll get you a piece of Tom Chalk. Congratulations, and now let's get on to the Rack of the Week. Hello, my name is Bob. Welcome to a short stop on pool. This is Rack of the Week number 52. That means I've been making these Rack of the Week videos for one year. That's just incredible to me. My first video on this YouTube channel was almost two years ago. As of this moment, the channel has grown to 8,144 subscribers. Thank you, guys. Thank you. This channel began as nothing more than an experiment to see what would happen. And I think it's done really well. And although I'm never going to do anything that I don't enjoy doing, I do feel a responsibility to produce good quality content, keeping in mind that the best I can ever do is to just be myself. So a couple of weeks ago, I put up a poll asking what you guys would like to see. And here are the results. Clearly, most people want to see how-to, instructional, technique type of videos. And I have to admit that after a year's worth of Rack of the Weeks, I'm wondering if I'm getting repetitive and if I've said most of what can be said in that format. So my plan is to continue with weekly videos published on Sunday nights, but they won't necessarily be about an entire rack of straight pool. Sometimes they might be about nine ball, or it could be about one aspect of straight pool, but I'm going to aim for something shorter and more digestible, and that's going to give me more time during the week to work on longer how-to videos. So things are going to change a little bit, but not so much as anyone would even notice unless if they took the time to listen to this intro. So to celebrate the 52nd Rack of the Week video, I'm going to do something just a little bit different. This is a straight pool match between Efren Reyes and Michael Yednak. And we're just going to look at Efren's innings. He only has a couple of innings at the table. But I'm going to watch the entire match and do a commentary rather than stopping and starting and talking about techniques. I'm just going to be commenting on what I see Efren doing. And this is a very excellent lesson in, believe it or not, old school straight pool. So let's get into the rack. Player's leg for the break and Efren comes up far short. Michael doesn't do a whole lot better but he does win the break. Something funny happens here though. Michael turns to Efren and asks him if you want to do rack your own. And Efren thinks he's talking about the leg for the break and he says, look at him giggle. Efren, Efren said, uh, you rack, I break. And, and Michael said, okay. And Efren giggled like a child, like he's getting away with something. So he thinks it's an advantage to break, I believe. And when you see the results of his break, you probably agree. So Efren is inside of the first diamond for his break shot. He's between the first diamond and the center. Now this is a tough shot, this five ball. And Michael doesn't want to shoot it. Most players today are going to go ahead and, and shoot that five ball in and either and probably send the cue ball to the bottom rail and up so they don't have an angle on this pink ball or the 15 to open the stack. But that's a really difficult shot. 
with from the cue ball frozen to the rail. And Michael's not looking forward to shooting it. Eventually, he does shoot a, a pack shot. He's trying to make this combination. Uh, but it doesn't go, and Efren gets his first opportunity. Let's advance to uh, Efren coming to the table. There go. So Michael scratched. Efren has his first opportunity to score. I think most people are going to want to shoot this uh, six ball because it's such an easy shot to start. This is just as the seven ball is just as easy. I like the seven because a low angle on this one puts the cue ball right into the stack. And We saw Everin walk, walk down to the side of the table. I think he's looking to see if this pink ball goes, which I don't believe it does, because that would be another way to open the stack. And so now he changes his mind and goes to the seven. But I'm not sure where he's going to go with the cue ball. It looks like he's going to come back. Yeah, he's going to come back to center table, not forward. No, no. He's doing one of his patented uh, shooting low on the cue ball, but letting the cue ball roll forward. Oh, so now possibly once the one ball is gone, then the pink ball does go. And so he's just going to follow forward to that side of the rack. Nope. He's shooting low on it. Ooh, that's not what he wanted. I'm sure he wanted that cue ball to come much farther, to come up center table to give him a choice of shots. But he wastes no time in deciding to go ahead and shoot the 15. And now he's got the cue ball on the low side of this pink ball. But it's close to the six and close to the rail. So he's probably, normally you might want to leave the six as an insurance ball when you go into the stack. But because it's so close to the rail, he's going to remove the six, get the cue ball off the rail. And now he has that angle. And he'll just trust that the balls are going to open and he'll get a shot. So that wasn't a real hard stroke, but it was a, a, a positive follow stroke. So that the cue ball hit a ball and then continued through. And he didn't get a lot of shots. He's a very thin cut on the 15, or he has this combination, which is a little bit off angle. Yeah, so he's a little bit nervous about shooting it, but heck, we're look, talking about Efren Reyes. If he attempts it, I expect him to make it. What do you do with the cue ball, though? Does he have an angle to draw the cue ball up and open these two? They don't really need to be opened because once the two's gone, this 10 ball goes. He has a break ball here and a break ball here. So he's in really good position. It's just a matter of navigating these without doing anything silly to get him in trouble. What's really interesting is look how much time he's thinking. He's not just thinking one or two balls ahead. He wants to make sure that he chooses the right shot and shoots it in the right way. Wow, that's an interesting choice. His, his best shot is this ball, which is the, the first ball in the combination. So he was planning on that carom going this way. And then did he play position for this ball on the side? I think he did. I think he was keeping his options open in that way. And you can see he's in no hurry to, to separate these balls. He has removed one of his break shots. So now he's pretty much committing to this pink ball, I mean the orange ball, and there's no great key ball above it. So he's going to make a, a, insure, a key ball out of one of these other balls. Ah, uh, okay. So he noticed probably very early on that the three ball in the side pocket puts the cue ball here, so he has a shot on the eight. So that op deals with these balls. I think he saw that opportunity when he shot that combination shot. Because once that eight ball's gone, now everything's easy. I wouldn't be surprised if he shoots the eight and pushes the ten ball over here. Then he's got a shot on the two. And then he can work his way around to the brick ball. Nope. He just slid past it to shoot, either shoot it back this way or have a shot on the two. Look at him standing and looking. So he didn't have a definitive plan there. He's deciding based on where the cue ball stopped what his best options are. But look at the amount of time he's taking. 
most straight blue players, myself included, would already be shooting. But he's really working it out. That's interesting. Oh boy. Not only did he make his break ball a little bit higher, but that was that was a, a he's a little bit fortunate not to get locked up right on the back side of that orange ball. So probably a little bit uh, getting used to the speed of the table so far. And that was a two rail position. That's a nine ball position. A lot of straight pull players would have gone one rail like this to get here. Evidently he wanted he wanted to shoot the five and preserve this as a break shot. But a lot of straight pool players would have floated one rail. This is more of a nine ball position to stun the cue ball two rails. And I don't have any problem with that at all. He gave himself options. Notice he has a shot on all three balls. Okay, this is a classic Mike Siegel pattern. I think he's going to use this as a break ball. And he shot a stop shot to give himself this two rail route to get on the break ball. Yeah. Uh, now he has a slight angle. I want you to notice something. When his cue ball went from the second to the third rail, it went here. And, he, and that resulted in him having a very shallow angle on the break ball. Had he sent his cue ball quicker to the rail so that it went closer to the break ball, then the cue ball would have stopped here. And I know Michael's in the way, but I think you get the idea of what I'm showing. If his if from the second to the third rail the cue ball had been closer to the orange ball, he would have a sharper angle and a much better angle on this break shot. But he's going to make it work. So that's just a stun into the head ball. And there's no way you're going to open the entire rack. He's fortunate to have a shot here, but that's, that's about the, the shot you can expect from that type of a break shot. And so now what do you do in order to open the, the rack? Obviously you want to get a re-break shot. One, one possibility was, would be to keep the cue ball uh, low on the table, cut the one and go straight into them. That's just one idea. Being that these two balls block each other, I don't see another opportunity there. Ooh, a little wobbly there. <clears throat> so now he's going to shoot the two, possibly. In this type of situation, you wonder if it's better to remove this ball or just go ahead with your original plan and shoot the one. But I'm not sure where he wants to move the cue ball. Perhaps he'll use the two to give himself this angle on the one so that he can bring the cue ball over here and shoot the 15 to open the stack. That's my guess on what he's attempting to do. And that takes really good cue ball control. So if you want somebody to shoot the shot, I think Efren's your guy. It's so easy to end up way too low or come too far, get behind the three, get straight on the 15. It's, it's, if you're not used to the table, it can be a little bit tricky to make sure you get the right angle. But it, once again, look at him, taking a lot of time, looking at all of his options before he decides. Oh, wow. Is he shooting the combination? Yes, he is. That's a brave choice. Most straight pool players would really love to choose an option that doesn't involve a combination. But he's not going to shoot this combination to make it, I don't think. Don't you think he would follow forward to open the stack? Or is he going to shoot it softly and then use the pink ball, pink strike, to re -break? That is not the best option. Now you notice he hit it kind of firm, and when you hit it firm, the cue ball follows the tangent line rather than curving forward. And that's why he only hit the top of that stack and just got one ball loose. You saw him stand at the head of the table and kind of smile. That's a typical effort thing to do. Smile or laugh at himself when he makes a mistake. He looks like he's eyeing this strike ball here into the corner pocket to open the run. It's a brave shot, but he's got the firepower to do it if it's what he decides that he wants to do. Nope, he's going to go to the 10 in the side. Oh, 
No, that was a deliberate safety. Smart shot. Now, if I'm going to return the safety, I think I'm going to thin this strike. And I want to bring the cue ball back behind the stack and get it as close to the rail as you can. You want to try and preclude your opponent from being able to strike the bottom of the cue ball. When you, when you shoot that, you've got to be careful that, there's, that these balls aren't frozen and that it doesn't open something up to this side. But this is pretty much the only shot, I would think. It's kind of like one pocket. You're trying to protect the 10. So you want the cue ball to not be able to see the 10 and, and not see the ball that, that you hit when you came up there. So this, and the cue ball's also off the rail, so it wasn't a totally successful safe, but it's a containing safety for now. And Efren, as far as I can tell, pretty much just has the same option, which would be to hit the seven or the pink ball if he can and bring the cue ball off this rail back to the same location. Let's see if he doesn't come up with something smarter. What a tournament this is. We have Fedor Gors shooting over here, Mike Deshane shooting here, Mika Imanen shooting over here. I think there's another top pro on the, on the table next to him. What a great tournament. He has chosen something else. Oh my God, he went offensive. Uh, I'm going to go back. I'm going to try and bring the video back and take a look. That's a back cut from near the rail into the corner pocket, into an upper corner pocket. How many of you straight poop players would have chosen this offensive option? What, what ball are you hoping to get a shot on next? The cue ball is going to hit the pink ball and come to the bottom rail. What? I'm not sure of any of any top straight poop players who might have chosen this option. But that's just the confidence of Efren Shotmaker. And he ends up with an easy, easy shot on the seven, or it looks like he might have a 10 on the side as well. What a shot. Amazing. Amazing to make that choice from there. There's no break ball. And there's only one, two, three, four, nine balls left. So what ball is he going to use to open this rack, the next rack? 13? I don't know. Once this ball and this ball are gone, there's a bit of a shooting gallery into this pocket. And that provides you with an opportunity to shoot one of these balls and nudge another ball over here into the, the break shot area. So that's the only possibility I see for making a break ball. But I'm going to point out once again, Look at how many times Efren went back and forth between the 7 and the 10 and trying to decide which one to shoot and why. The, I mean, that's the mark of a champion. So that looks like position for this ball. You, you, he's got two trouble balls in the same location on the table that need to be removed. They're, they're not going to have a lot of value in creating a break ball but he's still got to deal with them. Once again, look at the deliberation on his face to decide, not just give it a chance, but exactly what he wants to do. What I like now, maybe he chose to do this, was to play for an angle on the seven to run into these balls gently. That could push a break ball over, and this is your insurance ball. But he's not doing that. Very interesting. Uh, it looks like the six or the nine will pass this pink ball, so perhaps he's doing what I mentioned earlier, Will. He'll shoot one of those and nudge this, this stripe over to be a break ball. Um, he's not shooting at a quick pace yet. Every shot is deliberate and really putting a lot of thought into this. Yeah, there's your, 
Well, he didn't quite nudge him over far enough. Uh, possibly this, this 11 is clear of the rack and could be a break ball. But he's got the break ball and a brother and another one that are, that are kind of blocking. So he's got to get short side position over here to remove that six. Oh, and so what does he do on the very next one? Short side position. This is not a classical uh, straight pool end pattern, but it is the only thing he had, so he's making it work. And, and it looks to lead me like he's got to be stuck using the 14 as a cue ball, getting an angle to bounce the cue ball over to center table to use the 11 as a bird shot. That means you got to go from the six to the this pink ball. How in the world are you going to do that? Oh, I see another route. He has a route on the six right now. To do you know, three rails like this to get on the 14. And then you can get either angle on the pink ball works. If you're low, you can just bounce out for the break shot. Or if you're high, you can get the cue ball around for a break shot. Neither, like I said, none of those are. What is he doing? He just shot his break ball. Is the six bre a break ball as well? I guess, I guess the six is really low, but I guess it's clear of the rack. I didn't assume that it was. Oh my goodness, he's going to do a billiard shot, a reverse angle. That's a three cushion billiard shot, and he didn't get where he wanted. You, the, the cue ball always stiffens up dramatically off the fourth rail. So you have two running rail, rails of running English, and then a reverse rail and another reverse rail. And it always stiffens sharply off of that. That comes from three cushion billiards. You really would have to get the cue ball down by this first diamond so that it can come over here, and then it's going to come straight off. Uh, that's an amazing shot to take that route. An amazing decision to choose that route. And now he's got to play a soft, thin cut and ends up with a great angle on the six ball, a sharp angle on the six ball. I think most straight pool players shooting this ball would have simply tried to spin the cue ball gently over to the rail like this and shoot that strike in the upper corner and then bounce off the rail over for great shot position. So that's just an example of the creative mind of uh, Efren Reyes. Look how soft he hit that. I don't know of another street player who have done it. He might have shot it pretty soft, but not that soft. He's playing position for, for a, a ball in the bottom corner or the side. And that's exactly what he got. He actually has, has a choice of either. And the best re-break, so he's got a tremendously big cluster in the rack area. And the best ball that I see for a re-break is this seven. I'll get this angle on the seven and go into that. I'm not clear if... Efren tried to do that. No, he's giggling. That is not what he's trying to do. He was trying to draw the cue ball past those balls up here to get on the, sh on the seven or to get a shot on one of these to reposition to get on the seven. Now he doesn't have a shot other than a back cut on this three in the side. Again, we see lots of del deliberation, not just on the, the shot he's about to shoot, but what's going to come next. So he's not taking anything for granted. Yeah, and it's the back cut. Gets off the shot, reconsiders. He's look at him. He's making, he's deciding exactly what part of the 14 here that his cue ball is going to contact and where it's going to go. Oh my God. And he shot it softly into the side pocket, knowing the cue ball would carry him off the 14, hit those other balls. I mean, I'm, I'm claiming that all of that was deliberate. Now, he doesn't know what shot he's going to get out of it, but he didn't blast at it. He didn't leave it to luck. Now all the balls are separated. Remember there was just two shots ago, there was almost every ball was in the rack area. Look at him now. And, and he didn't do any stroke shots to re-break the rack. Just soft shots. Now I would be looking to shoot the two or the seven here. But he's going to the nine. 
Interesting. I'm not sure what he's planning. The best break ball is probably the seven, and it's not a great one. It's low and far from the rack. I wonder if he's going to nudge something or, or, or shoot them where they lie. Oh, he's shooting the one. There's a chance he's going to come across and nudge the 10 or the 14 over. So he's not giggling, so that's probably what he tried to do, but he, uh, he doesn't have a shot other than this combination. It's possible he was trying to nudge the 14 over. I'm not sure. I can't quite tell. But this combination is going to send the pink ball this way. So what's the cue ball going to do? Oh, no, it didn't send it that way. Okay. There's just so much deliberation and so much control in what he's doing. So is he looking at that? as a potential break shot. Is he deciding between the 11 or the 7 as a break shot? I think that's what's going on. And then what pattern is he going to use to get an inch? And he has a trouble ball on the rail over here he has to deal with as well. I'm finding it difficult to predict what he's going to do. So he's nudging the seven up to make it a better break ball or to clear access to the two. I'm not sure. Now his shot on the two, the cue ball is going to run into the seven probably. The shot on the ten is another option. It's a more difficult shot. And I'm not sure what it leads to. And, and he doesn't either. Look at him decide. There's only six balls left. He only has five shots to get on his break shot. Well, if he shoots the 11, then he's using the 7 as a break, break ball for sure. I like shooting the 11 because it you have access to it now, and it might be hard to get a, a better shot on it later. And it leads to the 14 or the 10 or the 2 uh, without hitting it hard, giving, shooting at a soft pocket speed. So what does Efren do? <laughs> he proves me wrong. He strokes it a little harder to get position on this, this rail ball, I believe. But before he does that, he looks, he looked over here to see if he didn't have a better option going this way. Uh, and that's important because, oh wow, he just barely made that. That's important because the two ball uh, is below his break shot. The two ball is in this area below his break shot. So that needs to be removed without disturbing the break ball, which, look at that. He just checked that with a ton of inside English to bring it over here, where he has a shot on either one of these balls. I mean, this is a non-traditional pattern, but Efren's just got so much control of the cue ball. And I really like this choice, what he just did there. It's so much easier to get the correct angle on the 10 in the corner to get the cue ball here than it is to try and get the draw back and try and get the right angle on the side to follow over there. That's, that's classic straight pull. That's very wide. Now you can see him giggling. And he's doing that because he didn't get what he wanted. He wanted the cue ball probably closer to where my X is. So this is the second break shot for him where there's a very shallow angle. So if the cue ball was here, he'd be able to break the, the rack wide. From here, he's going to be able to hit the corner ball, and there's still going to be a big cluster in the rack area, and just the perimeter balls of the rack uh, are going to be open. Michael, I apologize for drawing on you there. So the best he's going to be able to do is get the cue ball to hit this. Now, is he going to hit this soft like the last couple? I, I wouldn't. I would be hitting this very firm. I mean, he has such a shallow angle, he's got to hit it really hard just to get it over there. And I would want a lot of English so the cue ball hits the six, goes to the bottom rail, and hopefully would spin out. But that's hitting it really hard with a lot of spin. You saw him study it. I don't think he's going to do that. Nope. Once again, just hard enough to get a couple balls loose. Uh, a lot of people would call that old school straight pool. Now all he can do is make the six. I wouldn't try to hit the rack here. I would just try to come past it so you have a shot on one of these balls or this ball. Oh my God. Jacked up over the entire stack and he put inside English on that six ball. <laughs> wow. No, 
know, this has to be a rebrick shot, I believe. In other words, uh, right English to bring the cue ball right into the stack. Or is he going to come past it and use the orange ball? Yeah, that's what he's doing. Once again, exhibiting the cue ball control of the master. No, he just used spin to make pocket that ball, to control the cue ball, to bring it wide so that he maintained an angle on the orange ball. And then another very soft break shot. Wouldn't you? I would have stroked that with a firm follow stroke to try and open up all these balls. This is old school straight ball, ladies and gentlemen. Now he's going into the stack over here, probably gently, using this as his insurance ball, knowing that this is his next shot. It, if, unless he chooses something else better shows up. It looks like this combination is lined up to the rail. So that's something he's going to have to deal with. And probably this is a break shot. This uh, looks like the 13 or the 11. In here. So he just went around to check his angle, but I, don't have, I cannot predict where he's going to make the cue ball go off of this line. I would just want to bring it up to center table so I have an option to shoot one of, the, one of these balls. He doesn't. He went for a more aggressive, aggressive move to try and open up those balls. And these two are still tied up, and they're even worse than they were before. Whatever he's doing right now, I'm sure it's to set up for a shot that deals with this. So it looked like he was trying to nudge the 14 up and get a shot on the 8, possibly even to get an angle to open these, but I don't. Because if you had an angle from the 8 to open these, then this 11 on the side is your insurance ball. But that didn't work out, so now he's coming up with a plan B. Or plan Z, who knows. Got to find a way to get those two balls open. That's what's on his mind. Uh, okay, so he's going to use this ball. That's smart. Now this, this ball over here gently, and you have this as an insurance ball. So notice before he shot, he didn't bend down quick and shot that. He visualized. He stood above the shot and visualized it. And that may not be exactly what he was trying to do, but it was very much in the ballpark. And that messed up the break shot. But this is almost the identical break ball he had to start this way. This time the one is not a great cue ball because it can be tricky to, to float the cue ball over onto this rail. Yeah, and so he's shooting the one now and he'll use one of these balls to do that. So what do you do here? Do you make this gently? Bring the cue ball just to this area so you have an option on either ball? Or do you bring the cue ball all the way up here for an option in the corner on the cue ball? Looks like he's going the side pocket route. But this isn't a great angle on the 14. Wow, this is, once again, I cannot predict. I don't think this is where he wanted it. He just looked at having this angle on this ball in the corner to stun the cue ball over to here for his break shot. That's some pretty good control. It didn't come quite as far as he might have wanted, but very controllable shot. And you're hitting this so soft, it makes this pocket a lot bigger. Not that he needed it. And this time, he got the cue ball on the rail. So possibly, you're now going to see a much firmer break shot, a much firmer stroke to try and op open up the rack more fully on the break shot. That's my guess. Although I will not be surprised if Ephraim proves me wrong. For me, this would be a straight high ball and you got let her fly. Yeah, he hit, well, now he didn't blast it, but he did hit it with a much firmer stroke. Look at that, two bonus balls in the corner pocket. How nice is that? But because he stroked it that way, there's still a good sized cluster, just five balls in the center of the table. Um, he's not concerned at all. This is the, the style of straight pool he's been playing so far. It looks to me like he's going to tap that ball on the side and get an angle, bring the cue ball over here on one of these balls to open this cluster this way. Oh, okay. Instead of the 14, he chose this other one. 
for the corner. Didn't get a lot of angle on it though. He he can shoot this ball in the corner and and cause this one to carry him off this into this cluster. And just a little drawback and you have a 14 in the side as your insurance ball. That's what I see. I think he sees the same thing. Or likes the same thing. There you go. Very controlled shot. It's not a, a re-break where you're trying to blast the ball and scatter them wide. It's a very controlled shot that's really classic straight pool. And now for the umpteenth time, lots of study. Look at him. He's planning many shots in advance. Maybe not specific shots, but the order of balls. How, how, what balls go where, what balls block other balls from the pockets. Obviously, he has these two balls that he would like to preserve for key, for break balls, and the 14 is a great, not great, but it's a very good key ball for that break shot. Oh, wow. That takes some kind of confidence to know you're going to carom gently into a ball to play position on the ball that you're caroming into. So I believe he planned this out when, he, when I mentioned that he was standing there looking at it. And what I mean is this ball is clear to the corner pocket. So he can either nudge this ball or if he had a different angle, he could draw clear of it and come back around to shoot this ball over here later. But once again, he's proving me wrong by shooting off one of his break balls. Don't tell me you're playing the window for the seven ball, Efren. I, I don't believe you. Off of that shot? Either that or he was confident in getting this combination or shot it. I, I don't know what he's doing, guys. I, I just don't know. What, now, what does this lead to? Okay. What I'm seeing is he's been picking off the balls that are on the perimeters on the outside. That's outside working in. Now, that's classic old school straight pool as well. So now, yeah. This ball does go in this pocket, but he didn't shoot it when the cue ball was up here before. He shot three other perimeter balls before coming back around for that shot. That's old school straight pool, and that is super confidence in your cue ball control. Yeah, I don't know. He seems he's straighter on this ball than he was before. Look at him. He's even thinking about shooting the 14. He's taking the time to evaluate all of his options on every shot. So what he's doing now is he's going to use the 14 to set up on one of these balls and then use the other one as the key ball. That's, that's an awesome example of a plan B. Departing from traditional key ball just to make sure that the cue ball stays alive and then he gets through the rack trusting that he doesn't need that classic cue ball. He's going to get the cue ball where he needs it. it. Looks like he's got an angle now to just follow one rail and come right up here for his bird shot. I wouldn't be surprised if he spins two rails out of the corner. Can't quite tell what angle he has, but either one works. Yeah, straight up. Oh, that's not great. Kind of want this angle. Yeah, he even pointed. He just tapped the table with his cue stick right where my arrow went. That's where he wanted the cue ball, not this way. So I've just been praising him as a master of cue ball control, and he's not happy that he, that he made that mistake. So this is the third time he has a shallow angle. Man, this is not good. I anticipate, knowing what, I, what I've seen him do, that he's going to go gently into this corner ball, hoping that he gets a shot on the 10 in this corner pocket. And he proves me wrong. <laughs> nice. <laughs> So just to stun off the rack, that's going to push balls in this direction, and then you're hoping for a shot in this corner pocket. So uh, I'm sure he would have been successful either way. So once again, old school straight pull. He's not blasting the rack the way some players might have attempted to do on that break shot. Just he's content to nudge a few loose and, and work the problem from there. From here, it looks like he can come uh, uh, shoot the 14, follow to the bottom rail, and then off, and then cut the three and go into the stack in some fashion, or perhaps into the eight, and keep his cue ball alive and work the problem from there. That's what I see happening. 
Oh my goodness, really? Okay. That was a patented uh, draw stroke, or rather cueing low on the cue ball, but softly so you just get a controlled follow, knowing that he's going to have a shot on this ball or this ball, and then you can nudge a few more balls loose. So, yeah, he didn't even try to nudge it loose. He just wanted an angle on this ball to then nudge loose have it and, pre and uh, preserve the six as an insurance ball after that shot. I'm really enjoying this. This is classic old school straight pool. And I'm surprised because I've seen Efren shoot straight pool before and it, it wasn't exactly in this fashion. I think he, well, no, he's going to draw it. I thought he might have gone forward to get a shot on the three. Whoa, now he went a little more aggressive. That wasn't the shot that would preserve the six as an insurance ball. But he did know that he wasn't going to be drawing the cue ball to scratch. So it was a controlled shot in that respect. This looks like two rails to center table. Yep. He was going to have a shot on the seven or the 11 on the side or the 10 playing that position. So now Walker walking around and looking and evaluating. He's got to remove the eight ball and then he's got a shooting gallery on these balls in this pocket. But I anticipate him to do something different. Oh yeah, looks like the pink ball goes so he'll nudge these right now. He's got two potential break balls, the nine and the seven. I would anticipate he's gonna end up using this seven. So when, you, when, you shoot, when he shoots this, he's gonna nudge these softly, what's his next shot? The guaranteed shot would be this ball in the corner pocket. But he may choose to cue it differently Okay, so he nudged the cue ball up this way. His insurance was this in the side, unless if he gets a better shot here or on one of these balls. So once again, evaluating his, his, his prob possibilities after a shot that nudged these open. So he turned these balls into a shooting gallery over into this pocket. So you're gonna see him probably try and navigate the cue ball over here. So is that what this is? Nine ball and then use the three to go to the rail and off to get the cue ball over here. I think it is. Now he has a shallow angle, so he could just bump it off and then shoot one of these into this side pocket. Nope, that's what I said. Yep, right there. Now the angle on this ball takes him into the eight. I wouldn't put it past past effort to control the cue ball this in this direction and have a shot on the eight next. It looks like his angle on this ball sends the cue ball this way. And for that reason, he may shoot, choose to shoot this 15 ball and control the cue ball off the eight. Nope. Oh my goodness. So he's shooting what I thought would be the break ball because it's a better choice. Because it gets him on these balls without uh, while keeping the cue ball out of trouble, and he's just going to use this as the break ball. That's the type of opportunities that you see when you take the time that he's taking to look, and the choice that most straight pool players wouldn't want to make, the choice of removing a very good break ball and shooting a, and, and, and preserving a different one. Now, this is classic. He's going to go three rails up table. To get on the two. Yeah. Because the two leads to the 11 in the side. A lot of people talk about it. Oh, look at the triangle. Yeah, the triangle doesn't mean anything. A stop shot or a near stop shot on the two gets him on the two, 11 in the side. That's it. There's no triangle there. That's how you get on your key ball. And that's the reason why he chose this three rail route to, to get him on that shot. That's classic straight through. But I just don't believe in the triangle. That's not what makes it work. Now he's got a sharp angle. One of the rare sharp angle break shots we've seen him shoot in this run. And I know a lot of players would, would knowing that the cue ball is going to have a lot of energy, they're going to try and open a lot of balls. But I would not be surprised if Efren hits this somewhat softly and just nudges four or five balls loose. Just like that. How do you like that? When you shoot the break shot in that fashion, 
you're going to have a shot at a ball here or one of these low balls over here. But that's it. Huge cluster in the rack area. This is old school straight pull. Loving it. And now this has to be, yeah, this is position on this stripe to bring the cue ball straight up into here. This is what we call a catcher's mitt. The balls are kind of shaped like this. They're going to trap the cue ball, keep it from getting out of control, and this would be an insurance ball. And he's proving me wrong. He's looking at shooting something else. <laughs> or is he? What he's doing is making very sure about what he wants. He may send the cue ball, rather than sending the cue ball this way, he may send it this way, softer, to ensure the shot here. Now he's doing something completely different from what I said. Wow. So now this looks like shooting the seven and bringing the cue ball up here to re-break off in the eight. I'm curious. Oh, wow. I guess he didn't have a great angle to do that. I'm curious how many straight pool players would have chosen this ball and gone into the rack as a re-break. I sure would have. I would have shot that all day long. Another medium soft follow stroke with lots of rotation on the cue ball to get it to force its way through those balls. And what a great result he got. Still not a great break ball though. I, I, I assume this 15 is clear of the rack. It looks like it is. So let's see if he tries to preserve that in some fashion, even though that break shot is completely surrounded. I, I'm not gonna guess. I'm not gonna try and guess what he's gonna do. I, I don't know. Actually, he might bring the cue ball here to shoot the 10. Oh, nope, he's not. I would have brought the cue ball there to shoot the 10 and nudge this ball up and having the six ball next. But perhaps the 10 doesn't go. Now, if he shoots the 15, what is he looking at here? Usually I'm pretty good at figuring out what he's looking at, but I don't know. What is he looking at? He wants this angle on the two. He's, he's thinking about... Is he thinking about the break shot for the next rack, or is he thinking about... I don't know what he's doing. Huh. Maybe we'll know after this. But look, he's, uh, once again, a lot of thought being put into this. He's not leaving anything to chance. He knows he's going to get that cue ball where he wants it. So it looks like... It looked like now he just looked at the 10 six. So maybe the 10 goes here and he can get an angle to nudge this pink ball up and have the six as the next shot. Nope. Unless if he uses the one ball to get that. Yeah, so he's looking at the availability of the six and the 10 over here. I, I like what I mentioned because nudging this ball up gives you a key ball for your brick shot. Lots of attention to detail is what we're seeing here. Okay, so he chose not to play for one of these balls. So once again, I'm not guess I'm not able to guess what he's doing. This I don't know that I like. Leaving your break ball surrounded towards the end of the rack, in my opinion, leads to failures so often. You just end up with the wrong angle, and then you just have no nowhere to shoot the second to last ball. Is he nudging the six out? No. Ooh. I don't think he wanted to hit that. We don't see a giggle, but the cue ball ended up on the rail. I doubt if that's what he wanted. But look how, how well it worked out. Because now both of these balls are clear to this pocket. Oh, my goodness. Does he have the 10? Yeah, look at his expression. That's not what he wanted. He wanted a shot on the 10 or the 6 next. Oh, my. He's mass hanging around the 5 to get at the 10. I guess it wasn't all that much of a mass say, but look at all the inside English he had on it. And look at him giggle. Look at him giggle. He's giggling because he didn't get there. He wanted the cue ball to stop just here so he'd have a shot on the 6. Even that's not a great shot. Now he's got a... I mean, this is exactly what I was talking about. When you leave your break ball surrounded to the end of the rack, 
it, it leads to failure so often because you just run out of options. But look, he's just making it work because because he's Efren. He's going to send the cue ball to the side rail and back up with control. He just shoots those long uh, cut shots into the upper corner pocket like they're just just an easy shot into the lower corner pocket. Pretty impressive. That's pretty impressive stuff. So I think you're going to see another stun to center table, a draw stroke on this. Just like the last break shot that he shot. Four or five balls will come loose. Yep. Oh, a few more than that. He had enough angle to get more to come loose. The cue ball came farther up than he might have wanted. Now in this instance, I'm going to choose to shoot this ball over the 10 because it's so much closer to the pocket. But how do you control the cue ball? I would probably want to draw this way, knowing these balls are going to stop the cue ball. Oh, but he didn't. He just let it run into there, knowing he would get a shot. But even an Efren Reyes chose the ball that was closer to the pocket. Keep that run going. Looks like he can tap the 14. See, now I would have anticipated that he would stay low on this ball so he could send the cue ball into the cluster. He's not as anxious to open this cluster in the center of the table as I am. So I'm going to take that to heart and see if that can apply to my game. Little draw stroke using the eight ball to slow down the cue ball. Is you're going to go into the cluster now, Efren, or no? Nope. I don't know of many straight pool players who would not have sent the cue ball straight up into this cluster on that shot because the eight's your insurance ball. I, that, and you have such a good opportunity to knock the six or this pink ball over for a break shot. But he's choosing a completely different old school path. And now he'll use the nine to nudge these open with the two as an insurance ball. So he's finding opportunities as he softly maneuvers the cue, cue ball around the rack. Uh, of all the pros I've featured on Rack of the Week, I don't think any of them have shot in this fashion. They've all shot in the more modern, bust the rack open. See, even there, he didn't try to stun these, these other balls open. He's not concerned. Or maybe he is concerned and he's not showing it. But he's not trying to, to, to get to them uh, before he needs to. Even now, he's not drawing the cue ball in when he could have. He could have drawn the cue ball into them. He just played position to shoot this ball in the side and nudge those other three open. Wow. What a choice. I mean, it's a great choice. Look at that. Just hard enough to get them all open, and now he has all kinds of options for break balls and key balls. Here he's going to draw the cue ball back over here. Yep. Ooh, well, you don't want to be tree-topped over that 10. Now what, Efren? Now he's got to shoot the three. Shooting the seven runs into these other balls. So he's going to end up shooting one of these back over here, I believe. Yep. Wow. Just shooting the cue ball hard enough so it comes off the rail so he can bridge comfortably on the six. So it looks to me like he's got to go six, 10, seven. He doesn't have to, but that's what I see. The seven isn't ideal because you have to get a perfect angle to stun the cue ball up here for the 11 ball break shot or a very good angle to be able to go past the 11 or the other angle to follow two rails out of the corner. Ooh. Well, did he just... He's not giggling like, like he usually giggles when he gets the wrong position. So is this what he wanted? He can't hold the cue ball for the seven. He's going to have to shoot the seven and draw back and use, use the 10 to get on the 11 or use the 11 to get on the 10. I 
I think this is plan B for sure. Oh, come on now. That to to exercise the control to come there and now he has to go three rails like this to get on his brake shot. But to execute that that kind of control off the ten ball to draw the cue ball between two other balls, giving yourself a backwards angle on your cue ball. I don't think that's old school, but it is old school in the sense that he's making it work. Whatever he gets, he's going to make it work. That, that was pretty incredible. This is the first really standard break shot that he's had. A nice inside angle on a, on a break ball that's right across from this uh, middle diamond. And still he doesn't hit it hard. The, I, I don't know a straight pool in the world who wouldn't have struck that much harder. I'm sure he was expecting the cue ball to hit, hit the side of the rack and come down this way just a little bit. He didn't want to hit it hard enough to risk a scratch. But I'm sure he wanted the cue ball to come off the rack to give him a shot on a ball over in this corner pocket. So possibly we're going to see a safety. I'm, I'm not going to be the a slightest bit surprised if he shoots the nine ball in the corner because the 15's close to the pocket and that'll give you an opportunity to keep the run going. But that's a difficult shot for us mere mortals. He's looking at the six ball bank shot now. He's called the six ball bank. All he has to do is a just get the cue ball loose a tiny bit and he's going to have a shot on this ball in the corner. And a rare miss by Efren, but that was a difficult bank. They're look at him giggle. What other player is going to giggle when their run ends like that? that? That's just a true champion there. So Michael Yednak put together a nice run. I think it was at least three racks. I'll check the score and maybe insert it here. And he's in not all that bad of shape for this rack. And he didn't slow roll that ball. It was just a little bit of a miss aim or a miss stroke. Yeah, he's not happy with himself, and I wouldn't be either. I've missed that shot in the same way plenty of times. So there are two break shots here for effort. The seven, or he could go below the rack. I'm going to shoot the 11 ball to start. He could shoot the 10 or the 14 as well, but the 11 ball has to be the starter ball. So that means you're going to go 10, 14, or 11, 14, 10, or 11, 10, 14. It's got to be the former. It's got to be 11, 14. Ooh. I'm not sure if he was trying to get shaped on the 10 there. The 10's a much better key ball for the 7 ball break shot. So uh, that leads me to think that he's going to sh shoot the below the rack break shot. He doesn't have to. And see, he's evaluating. He's too thin on this 14. He could go straight up and then back down to get a cut shot on the 10. Or he could do one of his famous pinch draws where he softly cuts the 14 and pinch draws the cue ball over here. So. He's evaluating his options, He's really taking his time. I don't like shooting the 10 and trying to get shape on the 14. That's, that's a nine ball shot. That's just, that's, that's just too low percentage. So he's going to break the rack uh, from below. That'll be fun to watch. When playing position for this, I really love going to the rail and off, and just off a little bit. But by giving yourself a target of hitting the rail, you ensure that you, you, you don't uh, fail to float the cue ball far enough and end up too shallow. So that was a perfect shot. And also, Efren was really close. 
uh, to straight in on that seven ball, but by cheating the pocket a little bit, and he shot, that was another one of his follow shots with a low cue ball. That made the cue ball deflect this way. My cue ball might have stopped here. So that was an excellent shot. This is high left English, and I, come on, Efren, you're going to hit this one. Stroke it. Yeah. He wasn't going to slow roll that one. Now, and he didn't blast it. It was still a very smooth stroke, but that was the hardest I think he's hit a break shot yet. Four balls in the rack area. No ideal break shots. So I think dealing with this is the first priority because that's where your break ball is going to come from, most likely. Some players might shoot the two and try to bring the cue ball straight into there. I don't anticipate Efren to do that. No, of course not. Ooh. Okay. So what ball is he? I don't know how he's going to get these balls open. Is he going up table? Is he going to go up table and clear those balls and leave these balls to the end of the rack? Yes, he is. That's amazing. One option he does have is to leave the six, nudge these open, and then leave the cue ball in the rack area. So he has ball in hand in the kitchen to use the six in the side as a brick shot. I doubt if he's going to end up doing that. No, he's not. He may use the six ball. He may bring the six ball into this cluster right now, softly. But maybe not. Oh, okay. So he went that route knowing that this ball is open, but, but also he might get this window on the nine. I'm assuming that's what he did. Now, why, why wouldn't you shoot that nine ball and bring the cue ball up here? Oh, because the game's over. Never mind. Everything I said was didn't apply because he only needed a few balls. Oh, now look what he's doing. What other player wouldn't unscrew their cue and wait for their next match? He's continuing to shoot because he loves the game. It's not about winning any one match. That's the attitude of a champion. When you decide you're gonna be a pro pool player, he's about playing the game. He's about the performance. He's about what can I do with the balls on the table as they sit today. It doesn't matter if the game's over or not. He's about shooting pool balls. That's, that's the mark of a true champion. He just never quits. He's a pool player. Till the day he dies, he's gonna be playing pool. I hope you found that informative, entertaining, and helpful. If you did, please hit the subscribe button and give me a thumbs up. Head over to satoriflatrack.com and check out the promo video for my new and unique pool ball rack. And of course, shortstoponpool.com for my book, A Shortstop on Straight Pool. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time at Shortstop on Pool.